All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to back up your Synology NAS to Backblaze B2. All right, so first off, what is Backblaze? Backblaze is a cloud provider similar to AWS, but really it focuses on data providing, especially for backups. So Backblaze really focuses all of their optimizations on making sure that all of your data is available at any time, but still gonna be pretty cheap to back up and store. And overall, their restore process is really great. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things that makes them different in this market is the fact that they allow you to restore by sending you a USB drive, a hard drive, or if you have a ton of data, they'll even send you a Synology that's fully loaded with, I think, 70 terabytes of data in there. That way, if something critical goes down and you really need that data as soon as possible, you don't have to wait on a slow internet connection for you to get all of your files. And I think that's what really sets them apart from a lot of other data providers of just really having a great backup solution. It's what they focus on and I think overall they're really good at it. So Backblaze is also a really cool company. And I know this video is gonna sound sponsored, but overall they do a lot of great things. So Backblaze in no way has sponsored this video. Though I did figure out after I was planning on making this video, they've got affiliate links and so I put one down in the description below. But other than that, Backblaze has no idea who I am and it's not sponsored by them whatsoever. I just really think highly of this company because they do a lot of great things. First off, they've just got a really great backup solution and a restore process. That restore process is something I think that really sets them apart because when you need that data, you need it. And they make it possible to get it very quickly without charging you too much. You can get the eight terabyte hard drive restore for free as long as you make sure to return it within 30 days. That's the stuff that really sets them apart. Another thing that they do, and it's not necessarily about storage here, is they put their data out there. Not your data, but data they collect on themselves. So for example, they have a ton of spinning disks, and so they do a ton of metrics on it and see what drives fail and when as a cost optimization. Well, they took all of that, generated a report, and have posted it on the internet. And they allow you to see, hey, this hard drive failed after this many hours and it allows you to get a great look at how hard drives fail because they have probably tens of thousands of drives. And so you can actually see into what happens with hard drives on average, which not a lot of companies put out there. And I think it's something that's really important to praise the companies for doing this because it helps everybody out a ton. And most companies probably collect similar data, but keep it internal because it's competition sensitive and things like that. Overall, Backblaze does a lot of cool things. They also, when they were updating their disk shelves, they posted online that, hey, anybody who wants these can come pick them up for free. And there are stories of people who drove eight hours to get them because they're great disk storage shelves for consumers and data hoarders, though you probably don't want one in your living room. My girlfriend's already mad at me about my rack in the living room. All right, and so now let's talk about Backblaze's pricing. And that's probably one of the most important things. And they have a really good overall rate for data that is hot stored and you're able to get any time. It's $5 per month per terabyte, and to download, it is $10 a terabyte to download, which is incredibly competitive. It's not going to beat out AWS's deep glacier storage, but it's not trying to. This is data meant to be hot stored and be able to be accessed anytime, and not have to wait 12 hours to access the tape backups from AWS. And so Backblaze is kind of perfect for people with Synologies who just need to be able to back up their data to it and be able to access it anytime. It's a great thing to be able to do of just log into your Backblaze account and grab a file if you're on the road and be able to download it directly from them. That way, no matter what's going on with your Synology back home, you don't have to open any ports up to do this because you can just download it directly from Backblaze. They also offer snapshots of your files and just about everything you would expect out of a good, strong backup solution. Overall, I think that it's a really great choice and they've been around for a really long time and they've not had any issues that I know of so far with it. All right, so now without further ado, let's go ahead and set up our Synology NAS to automatically back up all of our files or the files we choose to Backblaze B2. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and create an account. And I've got that affiliate link down in the description below. And once you've done that, all you have to do is go ahead and log in. And this is what you see when you go into my account. So Backblaze uses a bucket method, which is similar to AWS's S3. And so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to first create a bucket and then we're going to create a app key, essentially a special user for our Synology to make sure it can't access anything else we'd like to put on here. And it's just really easy. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click 
create a bucket and it actually has to be a unique name. And I'm just gonna call it SpaceRx Backup. And as I said earlier, you can use this like S3 where you've got public files, but we're gonna set it to private. And now down here, we've got a thing called Object Lock. All right, so Object Lock essentially allows you to protect yourself from a hacker who goes in and takes over your NAS and deletes your backups. It essentially allows you to say, okay, I don't want you to be able to delete any files after a period of time. And so we're going to disable that because I want to make sure that files get deleted when they need to be. But if you are worried about a ransomware attack, it's not a bad idea to enable that. But I'll let you go ahead and read up on that more. So now we just go ahead and click create a bucket. By the way, the bucket needs to be a unique name similar to a username. All right, and so now you can see we've got this Space Rex bucket. And so we can start customizing things here. We can go into the lifecycle settings, which is basically how snapshots are retained. And so you can go through and say, you wanna keep all the versions, only the latest version. You can also basically recycle versions after they've been around for like 20 days or something. Or you can even say custom lifecycle rules. So you can say basically for any kind of file name prefix, this is how long you hold it, this is how long you delete it. We're just going to go ahead and say, keep prior versions of this file for We'll do 30 days. That way we don't have too many versions and probably if I need an old version, it's probably within 30 days, especially since this is just a backup. This is not my active data. And so on my Synology, I've got snapshot set up, which already has this feature. And so there's really no reason to double dip here. And I'm just gonna click update bucket. We can also go into the bucket settings. And this is where you can start having custom bucket info and things like that, but we don't need anything in here. All right, and so now we can go down into app keys and we're gonna to wanna to create a new app key. This right here that's hopefully blurred out is my master application key, which we really do not wanna give our Synology. Instead, we're going to create a new application key and we're going to call it Synology. And it's just going to be our Synology. And we're only going to give it access to that one backup in case we choose to add additional things later on. We don't want our Synology being able to mess with any of those. And here we're going to say that the Synology user essentially is allowed to see all the bucket names. That way we won't have any compatibility issues. And we're just gonna say create new key. And so right here, this is my application key for the Synology NAS. And it's basically how our Synology is going to authenticate with Backblaze. That way you don't have to store a password or anything. It's essentially these keys that are used for authentication. And don't worry, I'm going to delete this user after I'm done with this video. So basically what we're gonna do is we're going to take that, don't navigate away from this page because these keys are only displayed once when they're created. So you can go ahead and copy them and I would recommend doing that. And I just paste it in the notes, just in case. All right, and so now that we've created that, we're gonna go ahead and log into our Synology DSM, but remember, don't navigate away from the page. And from within DSM, we're gonna go in and open up Cloud Sync. If you don't have it, it's really easy to download from the Package Center, but I've already got it here and it's really easy to use. We just select that it's a Backblaze B2 backup and click next. Now this is where we're going to paste in the key ID and the application key. So we go key ID, application key. And now when we click this down tick, we should see this create new bucket or space Rex backup. That's that bucket we created earlier. So we're just going to select it here and click next. All right, and so now this is our cloud sync. It's called a sync because it's gonna keep the two folders in sync, but really we're gonna be using it as a backup. And so under connection name, we'll call it B2 backup. And under local path right here, we're going to select what folders to backup. It is not as good as hyper backup where you get to have specific files and things like that, but it's really good because we're gonna have it synced. And the reason we don't wanna use hyper backup here is because we want to be able to browse these files on Backblaze's setup. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select this ISO file right here and just click select. And this is the one that's going to back up to there. And so if you wanted to have multiple folders backed up to this, what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to create multiple tasks for this. And so for remote path, we're going to actually not use the root folder. Instead, we're going to create a folder within it and we're gonna call it ISO to match what is on our Synology. And so we're going to use that instead of the root folder. And for sync direction, I'm going to do upload local changes only. That way it's truly backup. 
And so if I delete a file off of B2, it will not delete the file off of Synology. And finally here, you can say whether or not you want to remove the files in the destination folder when we delete them off of our local NAS. And we're not going to set that up because I want to be able to delete something on my Synology and have Backblaze delete it as well. Finally, I would not recommend enabling data encryption as B2 already encrypts it because that means that you would have to only be able to access these files on a Synology NAS, which is not something you want to be able to do here. The goal of this is to be able to access the files wherever and if you need to, change a different brand of NAS or just get rid of your NAS altogether. And so finally, we're going to go into schedule settings to choose when it syncs. So we're going to say enabled and that's going to enable a schedule. So say I only want it to sync from midnight to 8 a.m. So I would say suspended and just select all of these guys. And so now it's only going to sync during these times. However, I'm going to disable that because I want it to be syncing all the time. Though you would want to enable this if you really wanted to make sure you had the fastest internet as possible during the day and nothing else was going on. But it's up to you on what you want for that. And finally, we're just going to click next. And finally, we can actually go into advanced settings here and do additional file filters and things like that if you want to. It's still not as good as hyper backup though. And now we're just going to go ahead and click apply. And it says, congratulations, we've successfully started the backup. And so that means that it's going to go through and basically anytime files change on my Synology, it's going to propagate those changes to B2. So now if we go back into Backblaze, we're going to be able to say browse files and it will see that there's this folder here and we can see right here, that there are files. It's starting large files, which means we can't currently do anything with it, but they are there. And so that means it's working. Okay, and now it's just gonna run. Let's go through and talk about some of the snapshots though. So snapshots allow you to bulk download files, which is way faster than downloading one and two files all at the same time. And it basically goes through and zips them all into a file together and then allows you to download that. And for really big restores, it also has a USB or a hard drive option that allows you to get eight terabytes from Backblaze sent to your house. And that way you can restore so much faster than if you had to download those files and you even get a refund as long as you send it back within 30 days. I think it's a great setup for that. It also has a setting for caps and alerts, which will send you alerts if you start getting close to where it's gonna start costing you money, or you can set these up however you'd like to. It allows you to say, oh, why is it uploading 50 terabytes this week? That does not seem right, and things like that. And so they've got a really good system for this overall. You can even generate reports and everything like that. So now we should have some more files in our bucket and we can even go through, and if we wanted to, download it directly off of here. Obviously it says starting large file in it, so it's not fully been uploaded yet, but we could do that as well. And we could just put it in our snapshot. And yeah, that's honestly it. Backblaze is a really easy setup for doing this, and it is just really secure. I would highly recommend setting it up, and that way you always have peace of mind for those really important files that you're going to have access to them if something happens to your home NAS. Most people probably have files that they really could not live without, like photos and text documents that have important information. And you've also got files where it's like, hey, it's nice to have, but I don't wanna pay $5 a terabyte a month for all these random things. And so I'd recommend going through and kind of figuring out what files you need and having those in the cloud. For most people, I bet it's probably under 100 gigabytes. And having peace of mind knowing that it's always safe is probably worth the 50 cents a month that it would cost you. All right, well, that's it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.